Spillman from Happy Healthy You. So we came to Wanderlust, we did awesome things, we took lots of yoga, we stand up paddle boarded, we played with hula hoops, we worked with a slack line. You can't even imagine the amount of activities that there are to do at Wanderlust. So if you want a great vacation where you can nourish your body, mind, and spirit, I highly recommend Wanderlust. There's great food, and the best part is there's great people. Great people that are our yogis and they're mindful and they're just awesome. So check out Wanderlust on the web, wanderlust.com, and enjoy this interview with one of the master teachers at Wanderlust. Namaste. Hi everybody, I'm here at Wanderlust with one of Wanderlust's favorites, Shakti Sunfire. Hi Shakti. Hi. Are you so having nice a good to time? Here. Yes, I'm having a great time. Oh, yeah. it's so awesome here. We are just having so much fun taking classes and enjoying the music and the yoga and the dance. Mm. Oh, what a party. It's always a great time, and this location is so beautiful. I mean, we've got the rain happening, but the beautiful, beautiful scenery. I love it out here. It's yeah, and nice. I'm sure with all these good vibes, the sun will shine tomorrow for sure. Oh, everybody's in the best vibes, yeah. So talk to me about Shakti Sunfire. Mm -hmm. What is that all about? What what does it mean? How did you get the name? Blah, blah, blah. Okay, so <laughs> kind of funny because it, you know you would think with a name like Shakti Sunfire, it's going to come in a really profound, interesting way. Most people ask, were you born with that? No, I was not born with that name. Sunfire was actually a screen name I had in middle school when AOL chat rooms okay. first came out. And I chose that because I was just at the time starting to get into astrology and I found out I was a fire sign and I always loved the sun, so I just threw it together. And that kind of carried forward into my performance career. And I had a really influential, beautiful friend who very early on in that career said, you have to have a stage name. Everybody has a stage name. And so I was like, what's my stage name? And I chose Sunfire because that was the only thing that felt authentic. After using that for about a year, it felt like a stripper name. So I was like, okay, you know, something else has to go here. And at that point, I was really starting to dive deep into the practices of yoga and even some of the yoga philosophy. Although when I found the word Shakti, I didn't actually know what it meant. Mm. It just popped out on the page to me. I loved the sound. I loved the flavor. I loved how, how it made me feel alive. And so I just started working with it. I put it in front of the name on the website and slowly but surely people started to choose to call me Shakti over Laura. I think it's fun for people to say. And at what point did you find out what Shakti actually means? And maybe you can share with the audience what it does mean. <laughs> yes, Little sure, did you know. absolutely. So it wasn't too long after I did look it up. Um, and Shakti, well, it has a, a number of different layers of meaning, meaning mm -hmm. as Sanskrit usually does. Shakti, just the easiest way to say what that means is power. Mm. Actually power. And so you can even travel around India and you see a lot of like the Shakti electrical company or the, you know, it's used sure. kind of in, in everyday language. But the way that um, the deeper meanings of it and the way that it's often used in the philosophy is the feminine principle or the animating principle of the universe or the creative force mm. that that brings things to life. And that I really identify with. That ah, that that too. looking back I'm yeah. like, oh that name chose me. Mm. <laughs> Big time, I yeah, think. Yeah. I, let, well, let's talk a little bit about that, about your mission and how you weave in the feminine principle and the divine feminine, because that's hot right now. It's I mean, hot. But, yeah. It's everywhere. Yeah. And it's one of those things that just organically started to become more uh, clear to me as I journeyed down my own mostly physical embodied path. Mm -hmm. So getting deep into yoga, getting deep into hoop dance, those two happened really simultaneously. And both were this, this deep invitation into the body and into the sensation of the bodies, of the body system. So it's, it's uh, for me, growing up in a very intellectual kind of erudite family, it was an invitation into feeling deeply for the first time, into trusting my own physical intelligence as its own way of knowing that was equal to my intellectual mind. And even bringing in some of the emotions and the flavors that dance invites us into, nothing brings us more alive artistically than our emotional awareness or even our imaginal intelligence. So just like the symbol of the hoop, 
that totality of the human experience mm. that really dropped in for me, because I'm a geek like that, into <laughs> the spiritual dimension of the human being, mm. which I, you know, in our society, I don't see, it's more and more it's happening. That's why we're seeing so much of the rising feminine, because to me, the feminine is these other pieces that create the whole of the human being that have been exiled for a very long time. They have been... So well said. Yeah, they've been less than, they've been suppressed. The body, even ritual as a way of being in participation with the wider world or speaking back to mystery. Our, um, our imagination, I mean, what funding in the school systems get cut gets cut first. Yeah, the arts. The yeah, arts. Right. So this is the rising feminine that's non-gender specific. Non-gender, right? not right. meaning male, male or, female. or female. It's the feminine aspect. And yeah. we do see men, I mean, I'm seeing a positive impact on men, oh, yeah. the male, the male species mm -hmm. in general, just because the feminine principle is becoming more and more available to us. Yeah. So. so let's talk about your work with the hoops. How did that evolve? And and I can't wait to take your class tomorrow, yeah. by the way, which is called what? What is it called? Tomorrow the class is One Hoop, One Love. Oh, <laughs> girl. So yes. tell us about that. How did the hoops come about and, yeah. and your work with them? Uh, I was introduced to the hoop early on. It was actually an ex-boyfriend of mine that was like, you have, you want to hoop with me? I was like, I don't know how to hoop, you know, not in my body I wasn't I really didn't grow up very much in my body so I was I was shy about that but then one day he convinced me to do uh, he taught me how to do one move which was a lift off from the waist and I spent eight hours that day just down the rabbit hole of like getting addicted feeling into the rhythm as it touched my body and it just it was like a you know, I hate to use these words because they're thrown around, but it really was a, a major turning point in my life. It was a pivot point where I had this deeper experience of my body. And mm -hmm. from that point on, literally everything changed. I was working in the advertising industry as a writer, copywriter, and a creative director. Within six months, I had gone freelance to support myself, and I started a hoop company with another friend, the only other person I knew at the time that was hooping. And we at first took it into the performance realm. So that was really my background. That's how I got started in Wanderlust, is I was hired as a performer the first couple of years, and then kept knocking on the door, hey, you know, a class would be really fun. This is a growing movement worldwide. And I guess the fortunate thing for me is that I, I uh, was on the front end of the of the of the curve of yes, the of yeah. the draw and so you know is able able to really uh, advocate for hoop dance as a new and evolving art form. And, and it's, it's so really unique cool. and obviously Wanderlust loves you. Tell us where we can find more information about you and your work and I know you work with people online mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. so tell us a little more about how to get in touch with you if we want to work with you. Great. You can find me on my website which is therhythmway.com or one of the easier ways to remember that is just to go to www.shaktisunfire.com and there you'll find a lot of different ways to be involved Involved. I uh, work as a counseling astrologer, so I, I layer that into my work oh, as well and, and um, send out new moon and full moon kind of updates what's happening in the, in the stars and how is that affecting our lives. So that's a, you know, an easy, simple way just to stay in touch. Um, that's my newsletter. And then lots of different online programs specifically for women. I do a lot of work on actively embodying our own spiritual dimension and moving into bringing back things like ritual and creativity and, and, um, and play as, as major ways of knowing and being as a human being. And then there's, I do a couple of online events as well, but that's all up there and yeah, best place to find me is online. Awesome. Now. Well, I can't wait to take your class and thank you so much. And I think Sunfire is a perfect name. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> For what you do. So <laughs> thank, you. thank you so much. And we're going to go back and enjoy Wanderlust. <laughs> <Woo -hoo. laughs> it's awesome. Thank you.